Hello and welcome back to Koala Moon, children's bedtime stories and meditations designed to make bedtime a dream. This is Potato and Beans in the Wild, Wild West by Susanna McLaughlin. One hot, sunny day in the middle of nowhere, Potato and Beans were wiping down tables, pouring coffee, and expertly carrying wobbly trays stacked high with milkshakes, never spilling a thing despite their roller skates. It had been a busy morning, and now they were enjoying the relative quiet of brunch time, that sleepy moment in between breakfast and lunch where there were a few customers eating eggs and reading papers, but no queues snaking from the counter or plates of food piling up at the service window. Potato and Beans were enjoying the music on the radio and cleaning the coffee machine with little raggedy toothbrushes when the diner door swung open and then clicked to a close. The familiar slow click-clack of cowboy boots announced a visitor's arrival from the door over to the counter, and a friendly southern drawl wished the cats a good morning. Potato and Beans put down their brushes and gave warm hellos, turning to see the face of a gentleman they knew well, old Dallas Cassidy, a human who lived on a ranch overlooking the canyon. Dallas came to the diner once in a while to chat with the regulars about the good old days, eating cheese and grits and bowls of chilli. Dallas always had a hat on his head and boots on his feet and a shirt embroidered with stars tucked into his blue jeans because Dallas was a cowboy. Other than his trips to the diner, he spent his days on the open plains riding horses and herding his cows and going on adventures into the mountains and across the cactus-studded desert. Potato and Beans thought he was really cool and perhaps a little magical. He seemed to have walked out of a history book, after all. There weren't many cowboys like him left in these parts, and he was the only person to park a horse in the parking lot rather than a car. Potato and Beans waved to Dallas's horse now. Mrs Pig was already tending to him, putting down a large bucket of porridge and a bowl of apples at his feet. Dallas took his place on one of the stools at the counter and ordered a milkshake. As Beans began whizzing one up in the blender, Potato chatted with Dallas. It's hot today, isn't it, Dallas? She said, fanning herself with a menu. Dallas nodded. I haven't known a summer this hot since 1873. Potato murmured her agreement. Dallas always said peculiar things like this, but the cats, for the most part, ignored them, thinking it was just his way of joking. He was old, yes but he couldn't be 150. I bet they didn't have air conditioning in 1873, Potato said. Dallas shook his head. Nope, he said. The diner was insufferable in the summer. Potato looked at him quizzically. Which diner? she asked. There's one. Dallas said, although it wasn't called a diner then, it was called a saloon, and it wasn't in the middle of nowhere. There was a little town here back then, home to cowboys and gold miners. Now, people live all the way out in the city, but the diner is still here. Beans put Dallas's milkshake down on the counter and asked, Is that really true? Dallas nodded. I've seen it, he said. Beans laughed. He was just joking again. No, really, Dallas said. 
I can show you. Potato and Beans looked at one another. Beans had one eyebrow raised in an as if sort of expression. Potato, on the other hand, had a look of awe on her fluffy little face. It seemed she believed every word. Go on then, Bean said. Show us. Dallas put his foot up on his neighbouring stool and took the silver star-shaped spur on the back of his cowboy boot in his fingers. He turned it anti-clockwise once, twice, three times. As the spur turned, the diner began to shimmer, as if the air around them was filled with magic. Then it began to swirl, and the customers began to move backwards, as if they were on a rewinding video. Then everything was a blur, apart from the three of them, until with a pop they found themselves standing in the diner once more. Except it wasn't their diner, with its chequered floor and leathered booths and neon signs. It was their diner, but it wasn't, too. The walls and floor were made of wood, for one. The glass door was replaced with swinging gates, and the tables around them were filled with laughing, chatting animals in the strangest old-timey dress. Most people were dressed like Dallas in full cowboy gear, apart from some of the women who were wearing big skirts and feathered hats and some townsfolk wearing old-fashioned suits. Behind the counter, now a wooden bar covered in old metal bowls and plates and glasses that looked like the ones Beans's grandma had in her antiques cabinet, were two cats who looked not so different to them apart from their frilly aprons and lack of roller skates. The cats said their friendly hellos to Dallas in the same drawling accent that he speaks in, before turning to Potato and Beans. Why, howdy, they said. Who are you and where did you get those most peculiar clothes? Beans looked down at her stripy jumper, apron and pink roller skates, uh, the future, I guess, she said. The two cats giggled. Well, welcome, weary time travellers, to Biscuit and Chili's Saloon. Potato grinned. She felt like she was looking back in time at herself. Beans's mouth was hanging open in awe. They took seats at the counter and Biscuit placed a tall glass of creamy milk in front of each of them. Chili put down plates of bread and cheese and fruit, which the cats tucked into. Whilst Dallas, Chili and Biscuit chatted and caught up, Potato and Beans looked around the saloon, pointing things out to one another in whispered giggles. That boar over there looks like Mrs Pig, Potato said but she'd never wear that frilly bonnet. There were groups of cows playing cards and sheep singing songs and a band of dogs and raccoons in the corner played music on old instruments. One strummed a banjo, one scraped up and down on a washboard and another blew into a clay jug. A couple of mice were dancing in the small space in front of the band twirling one another around and jiggling their feet. Soon, Beans began to tune back into Dallas's conversation. Chili was telling him about a new boutique out on Main Street. Main Street? Beans asked. Where's that? Biscuit giggled. Why, just outside, silly, she said. Maybe. We should take you shopping. Those wheeled boots look pretty fun. But they won't help you out in the dusty desert. Potato and Beans immediately said, yes, please. If they were spending the day in the Wild West, they may as well look the part. 
Once their milk had been drunk and nibbles had been nibbled, chilli and biscuit led potato and beans out onto Main Street, leaving Dallas in charge of the saloon. It was much brighter out on the street, and the cats blinked as their eyes got accustomed to the change. Outside it was bustling. In place of the long road that crossed the empty plains outside Potato and Beans's diner, was a line of wooden buildings and a dusty street. The air was golden with desert dust, being kicked up by the big, shaggy horses that wished them a good afternoon as they headed by. A grizzly bear in a bonnet and long dress walked from one store to another, arm in arm with a similarly dressed badger. A gopher in a waistcoat sauntered by, looking at a pocket watch. Biscuit and Chili began giving their tour of the tiny town. At the top was the general store, a small barn-like structure, outside of which a frog in dungarees was swaying in a rocking chair, chewing on a piece of wheat and reading an old yellowed newspaper. Inside were wooden shelves stocked with bread and cheese and potatoes, ears of corn and packets of sugar and flour. Behind the desk, manned by a smiling cow, were huge buckets of milk ready to be ladled into glass bottles. Next, there was a hardware store, owned by a horse in a suede waistcoat. He sold saddles and harnesses, ropes, and all the bits and bobs you might need around the ranch. There were little boxes of mixed buttons and screws, and odd little pieces of wood and metal whose functions weren't obvious. It had everything a horse and cowboy duo would need here in the wild, wild west. The horse stacking the shelves greeted his own cowboy with a high five as he entered the store and took his place counting coins at the cash desk. Next, there was a shop selling cowboy boots. They were led inside. Biscuit called, Cooey! And a goat appeared from a back room, carrying crates of shoes and polish and brushes. She called hello to the cats. Hey, Chili. Hey, Biscuit. You don't need new boots already, do you? You girls work too hard. The cat shook their heads. Your boots are strong enough to last a lifetime, they told the goat, introducing potato and beans and showing her their roller skates. The goat's eyes nearly popped out of her head when she saw their wheeled shoes. Well, those are simply marvellous, she said. I'll have to make some. They'll cause quite the stir on the next line dancing event at the barn. But they are hardly practical day to day here in the desert. We'll have to get you some boots. The goat introduced herself as Betsy and explained she was the best boot maker for hundreds and hundreds of miles. In fact, She was the only bootmaker for hundreds of miles, but she truly was very good at it. Betsy pulled the dust sheets from the shop shelves, revealing row after row of gleaming cowboy boots. They had them in every size, shape and colour. Biscuit and Chili began pulling pears from the shelves for the cats to try. They picked better than the cats could have picked themselves, somehow guessing their sizes and favourite colours. Potato and beans pulled on each pair and strutted across the store in them, showing them off on the catwalk. Finally, they made their selections. Beans went for a pale blue pair, embroidered with spoons and forks and milkshake glasses in gleaming white thread. Potatoes were creamy white and decorated with brown thread in shapes of stars and moons and clouds. 
She said the colour combination reminded her of hot chocolate and cream. Thanking Betsy and their cowboy counterparts, Biscuit and Chili, the cats walked out into the street, strutting their stuff in their new shoes. We're going over the street now, Chili said, to the hat shop. You don't want to burn your ears in this sun. The group headed into the hat shop, an elegant cream cabin with green painted shutters. They were greeted by a whirlwind of a hare named Hattie, who was picking out hats and putting them on their heads before they could even introduce themselves, announcing that they looked darn rootin' tootin'. She immediately picked out a wide, sandy-coloured cowboy hat for Beans, which Beans was ecstatic about, but had picked a flowery bonnet for Potato. Potato eyed Beans's hat jealously and politely declared that she wanted to be a cowboy too. Hattie obliged and picked her out a turquoise cowboy hat, tied with a string around the chin and decorated with little gemstones. That's more like it, Potato said, looking at her reflection approvingly. They paid for their hats and headed back out onto Main Street. The four cats strolled by the sheriff's office, where an opossum sheriff, who looked suspiciously similar to the sheriff Potato and Beans knew well, was polishing his badge. They passed the town hall and the church and the schoolhouse where a gaggle of kittens and puppies and baby raccoons and badgers and gophers were sitting on a carpet, listening to the words of their mountain lion teacher, Mr. Boone. At the end of the street, between a shop full of dusty old furniture and the dance hall, are the stables, where horses are relaxing in the shade, chatting and playing games around glasses of lemonade. You know what every cowboy needs? Biscuit grins. A trusty steed. You want to see if one of the horses will take you on a ride? The cats nod. Chili claps her paws. Let's go see, she says, trotting over to the stable doors excitedly. A group of horses wave them over as they arrive, greeting the cats with friendly howdies. We were just headed out for a ride if you'd like to come along, said the biggest horse, a silky chestnut colour with a toothy smile. The cats grinned and nodded. He rode with Biscuit, and a slightly smaller, cream-coloured horse rode with Chili. A friendly, shiny-maned pony named Peach rode with Potato, and a splodgy grey horse named Bo took Beans. The cats took a while getting their boots into the stirrups and hoisting themselves up on the horse's back. They and the horses were in fits of giggles when it was Potato's turn. She could hardly get herself off the ground. In the end, Peach sunk to the floor so that Potato had less distance to climb and Beans pushed her on by the bum. When the cats were finally sitting in their saddles, the four cowboys and steeds rode out into the desert. The wind blew through their fur, and the cats meowed happily as they headed out into the sunny desert, past cacti and boulders, up hills and down into valleys. Before long, they found themselves no longer in view of town. If Potato and Beans didn't know they'd travelled back in time, they'd have thought they were in the present day. Not much had changed. The desert was as beautiful in the past as it was in the future. Soon they came up to the edge of a ranch where a cluster of cows were laying in a field, enjoying the peace and quiet, chewing on wheat and chatting languidly with their friends. Several of them waved a friendly hello in the cowboy and horse's direction. 
a group of young cows trotted over to them, grinning excitedly. Do you guys want to play? the youngest asked. We could play lasso. The horses nodded their large heads. It seemed they played this often. Peach called back to Potato and Beans, asking them if they wanted to play. The cat said yes. They never turned down an invitation to play. Peach and Bo told them the rules. They had to take the reeled up rope from their saddlebag and tie it into a lasso. Then the cows would run rampant and the cowboys would ride the horses to try and catch them with the lasso. Then they'd swap and the cows would try lasso the cowboys. Potato and Beans giggled. This sounded fun. They prepared their lassoes, tying them exactly how Biscuit and Chili showed them, and waited for the game to begin. The cows finished their stretches, and once everyone was ready, an old cow on the sidelines counted them in. Three, two, one, go. The cows began running this way and that, weaving between rocks and sprinting past the horses. The horses were hot on their tails, switching direction just like that, tails swishing from side to side. The cows weren't easy to catch. Potato and Beans looked at each other laughing. They were clinging onto the horses not to fall off. How could they lasso? Biscuit and Chili eventually caught their cows and helped Potato and Beans chase theirs. Thinking she was close enough to catch her cow, Potato began to wave her lasso around her head again and again until she became completely tangled up in it. Beans managed to throw hers and thought she'd caught her cow, only to see it caught around the neck of a large prickly cactus. Eventually they stopped and the remaining two cows were pronounced champions as were Biscuit and Chili for catching a cow each. Potato and Beans clapped. When it was the cowboys' turn to get chased, they were rounded up within five minutes. The cows had obviously been practising. When the sun began to lower in the sky, the cowboys and their steeds bade goodbye to the cows, who flopped onto their hay bales and prepared for a snooze. The four cats rode their horses back to town and left them starting a game of snap back at the stables. They said a sincere thank you for the journey before heading back to Biscuit and Chili's saloon. Dallas was still behind the counter, pouring drinks and chatting with the animals. How did you enjoy your day in the Wild West? he asked Potato and Beans. They gave him sleepy smiles and told him that they absolutely loved it. Dallas grinned. He could see they were exhausted from their adventure and asked if it might be time to go home. The two cats nodded. They wrapped Biscuit and Chili in hugs and thanked them for everything asking if they might visit them again in the future, or they supposed in the past. The two cats said of course, and promised they'd come and visit Potato and Beans' diner one day too. Then Dallas turned the spur on his boot clockwise, one, two, three times, and the world began to move a little quicker around them. Everything turned to a blur before suddenly, with a gentle pop, they were home. The diner was dark now, and Mrs. Pig grinned at them from behind the counter, complimenting their hats and boots. She asked them if they had had a fun adventure, and the cats promised they would tell her and Ozzy all about it in the morning. For now... They had to go to bed.
Wishing good night to Mrs. Pig and Alice, the sleepy cats climbed the stairs to their apartment. They brushed their little white teeth and each had a warm, bubbly bath. They took turns to make their fur soft and fluffy with the hairdryer before settling into their beds in their favourite pyjamas. Potato, Bean said. You can't sleep in your cowboy hat. It won't be comfy at all. Potato sighed and took off her hat, putting it on her side table so she could easily reach it in the morning. Thank you for coming on an adventure with me, Bean said. Potato told her that she hoped they could go on a hundred more adventures together, and Beans agreed. Good night, Potato, Bean said. Good night, Beans, Potato said. Outside their window, a million twinkling stars and a full moon shone down on the desert and the cosy diner where once stood an old saloon and a town full of cowboys. Now it was home to potato and beans and welcomed thousands of passers-by every day, although just over the canyon there still lived one last cowboy by the name of Dallas. Potato and Beans drifted into sleep, dreaming of riding horses through the stars, chasing cows amongst the galaxies. We're drifting towards dreams now, the happiest, loveliest dreams you've ever dreamt. We're calm and cosy. Your breathing is relaxed and you can feel that lovely weight of the blanket keeping you safe and warm. Aren't you comfy? You are so warm and cosy. So sleepy. As you drift into dreams, count all the things you're grateful for. Let yourself fill up with all of the little moments that made you smile today. See the faces of the people that made you laugh. Think of the things that challenged you. Think of the things you learned and the practice that meant you'll be a little bit better tomorrow than you were today. Think about how warm and cosy and sleepy you are here in your bed. What a day you had. Wonderful things lie ahead for you too. You will have wonderful adventures tomorrow and the next day and the one after that. The whole world is waiting for you. But there's no rush. There's nothing more to do today. All that's left for today is rest. Deep, cosy sleep. The most beautiful of dreams are waiting for you now. That's why you're drifting off, gently, into dreamland. So keep breathing slowly. Let yourself get toasty warm. Let your eyelids stay heavy. And know that you are safe. Remember that you are smart. You are brave. You are kind. And you are loved. Think it to yourself. I am smart. I am brave. I I am kind. I am loved. You are a dream. When tomorrow comes, you'll face it with a smile. 
because you are smart, brave, kind and loved. Because you are you. Uniquely, wonderfully you. What kind of dream are you drifting towards tonight? You can dream however you want because your imagination is as wide as the universe. What will you find in tonight's dream? Maybe you'll see your favorite characters. Is that Hector and Sonny over there? Maybe you'll visit the moon where there's mice eating cheese in the craters. Maybe you'll walk through Sleepy Forest where Coco the koala is strumming his pink ukulele on the banks of Sleepy River. Let your imagination take you away. Your dreams are all yours and you deserve the sweetest dreams of all. Because you are brave, you are kind, and you are loved. You are brave, you are kind, and you are loved. And you are wonderfully, uniquely you. You are a dream, and it's time to sleep tucked up in your bed. Breathe slowly and melt into your bed. Isn't it warm and soft and cosy? It's time to rest. Take deep breaths in and out and let yourself relax as you say goodbye to the day. Let your body get even heavier. Let your whole body go floppy. Drift deeper into sleep with every breath and say goodnight. Remember, tomorrow will be a good day because you have a big heart. You are a good friend. You believe in yourself. You know there's nothing better to be than yourself. It's okay to get things wrong. It's okay to ask for help. You can do whatever you set your mind to. Be proud to be different. Be proud of your achievements. Be proud of yourself. You are a good learner. You are a good listener. You are a good example to others. You are valued. You are loved. You are sleepy. So drift off now, little one. Let the dreams take over. As you sleep, let your dreams take you to magical lands and faraway places. Remember, there's no room for worries in your dreams, just magic. It's a magic place where anything can happen, anything you want. It's a place of positivity and light. Let positivity soak into you and fill you up. Imagine it as a golden light traveling from the tips of your toes to the top of your head. Imagine that wherever the light touches you fills with happiness. Imagine that the light makes you feel calm. You're wrapped in a warm, cozy glow within your soft, toasty blanket. 
Isn't that nice? You are safe, tucked up tight. So sleep soundly all through the night. Sweet dreams, little one.